outside leg there and kind of flex him a little bit more to the right that he kind of gives in a little there you go that he doesn't have a twist in his neck when he's flexing to the right there you know what i mean yeah. he gets just a little bit of a tweak in the neck and doesn't really and that's where the inside leg is going to come in your outside leg has kind of already got the butt in that your your inside leg is going to kind of bump him a little bit off that right shoulder and make him loosen up a little bit more there That's right. Have you trotted in, Cannard, or just trot warm up? Uh, just a trot. Okay, let's go ahead back to the trot when you're ready. And do a couple trot canter transitions. Come to the circle here in the middle in front of us. I know the letters are a little off because they're set for a short court in here, so. Just guess. Yeah, but I want your right leg to be more aggressive and your right rein a little less. Okay, and I want you to kind of bang him off his right mouth, right side of his mouth. I want your right leg to bump him off the right side of his mouth. That's right. Feel what I'm saying there? Yeah. So you don't kind of grab and snatch at him with that inside rein too much, but you let that inside leg, inside leg kind of bump him off of it as needed. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep, that's right. And go ahead and canter when you're ready. Remember, your seat is part of that, yep. So you want that right hip to really be what says, go ahead and canter on. Your legs are gonna be there in right lead position. <clears throat> Good, bring that outside leg just a little bit more back in general, keep it back a little bit more all the time. And that canter's about half as quick behind as I want it to be. If he locks up on that right rein, put him in haunches in again. Yeah, right there, make him work for it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Let him know that every time he latches onto that right rein, he's gonna have to work a little harder. So he might as well stay soft on it. Yep, right leg little kick there at the girth. Good, quicker behind. Not bigger though, half alt a little bit. And quicker again from the lower leg, a little kick both legs. And don't let him go necessarily more forward, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of about containing that energy a little bit more. Yep. Yeah, good catch. That's right. Good. Collect a little bit more. Yep, and make them a little kick with both legs there. Make them a little quicker. Yep, and half alt him back a little bit again. Collect a little bit on the outside and make them quicker behind. Tap them a little bit. Half alt back on the left. Yep, half alt on that outside right. Yeah, that's right. Then he starts to put that picture together a little bit better. Kind of starts to work towards more of a collected frame than a working frame. Good, straight ahead, and then a little trivier on the long side. Quicker, 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 quicker. Feel how, he, as soon as you started the straight away with a little bit of that haunch, he got immediately a little slow behind. Atta girl, keep him quick behind. That's right, quicker. That's right, and half alt him back a little bit again. Outside rain is your half alting rain. If he gets stiff on the right, you're gonna put him in Trevere again. Every time he locks up on that right rein, you're gonna ride a little haunches in to get it loose. Good. Yep, exactly. And half alt him back a little bit on the left again. Yep. yep, sit a little deeper with your seat when you half alt too, so you think you wanna push his hind legs deeper a little bit lower behind you, that he gets a little lower behind and a little higher in front. Better. Good, keep your butt heavy. Sit deep into the saddle, sit deeper. Yeah, good, good. That's a girl. And back to the trot when you're ready. Again, try to be a little careful with that right hand that you don't bang him in the mouth to pick him up, but you let your right leg bang him a little bit instead. Not so much with your inside hand. I don't want your right rein to bump him so hard. I want your right leg to get a little bit, little bit tougher about that and your rein a little less tough. I want your rein to be the last thing of the aid system that comes through when he's tough on that right side, okay? Yeah. I know it's the first thing you feel, but it needs to be the last thing you use to fix it because it's, the, it's really a symptom of the fact that he's stiffening through that right side of his body. You know what I mean? That right rein heaviness and him leaning on that right rein all has to do with him not giving you his rib cage, not his neck. 
So don't don't go too quick to grab that right flexion. Try to give him a, I'd be quicker to kick him with my inside leg and then flex him a little bit right. One stride later, like not long later, but, but definitely get to the leg a little bit quicker than the rain, which is hard to do, but you gotta practice it. Go ahead and pick up your reins and let's do a little trot canter this way. Good. Good. That was a nice transition there. How'd that feel? Good. Good. And same thing, half halt him back a little bit in the right rein and a little kick with both legs. Kind of wake him up a little behind. Remember, you want to get his hind legs feeling like they're a little bit on fire. Yep, a little quicker behind. Quicker. Believe it or not, it can be quicker still. I know it feels quicker than normal, but it can be quicker. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Better tempo there. Good. And you can ride a couple steps, a little hunches in just to kind of test the response. Usually, yeah, that was too much hand. That, that went right to your inside hand, super strong. And then he, he almost fell out of the canter. Did you feel it? Try to approach it with your leg first. Think inside leg, push those shoulders a little bit right. Outside leg brings those haunches good and then half halt a little bit in front. Yeah, exactly. Better. And then you can let him out of it. Try not to come first thing to your rein though. Again, a couple steps, haunches in, leg first. Inner leg, little bump to push the shoulders a little bit right. Outside leg, little bit back to push the haunches. Yeah. And then you can flex a little left. Good. Exact. Ah. It's okay. Can or on? That happens every once in a while. That just tells you that he was listening to your rein a lot more than he was listening to your leg. Doesn't necessarily mean he was, he was, you were using not enough leg. It just sometimes means he wasn't listening to it. So you have to kind of be the judge of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there's times I feel like I've had enough leg on that it should have done it, but he kind of fell apart anyways. And it's just because he gets dull to the leg. So you have to make sure you keep that, that keep him a little wild to your leg, you know, a little bit hot to the leg there. Good boy, buddy. I'm like, yeah. He loves moving. Does he? Yeah, he cries when moving goes away. Oh, no, I'm sad. Your best friend. I don't know that Ruben has a similar <laughs> feeling. <laughs> Ruben's kind of doesn't really think much about anybody but himself, yeah. I think. No, he doesn't care. He's never been murder or anything at all. Oh, my God. Risky? Yeah. yeah. When was... Risky had his septic joint yeah. and had to go to the hospital, I said, how many horses do you have in there right now? Yeah. yeah. And how many are staying for as long as Risky? Right. And he said, well, we're actually empty right now. We don't have anybody in there. And I'm like, Risky will kill himself. Yeah. I so. said, please tell me you'll make me a deal for me to bring in another horse with him. <laughs> so, poor Maxine, <laughs> my 26-year-old mare, gets dragged into the vet clinic with Risky. <laughs> they had to have her in just the right stall so that he could see her at all times. <laughs> and man, you know, like the management on that horse is so challenging because of his herd issues. It's amazing. Okay, gather him up again. Nibis was that way. Mm -hmm. Almost every lengthening stride. Don't ask me why. He would witty. Yeah. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. He sounded like a little baby too. Oh, of course. Okay, let's canter on when you're ready. If he dives down a little bit, I want your inside leg to kind of bump him up rather than your rein. That was not quite collected enough. It wasn't terrible, but I think you can do better. Kick his hind legs under a little bit with both legs. Say, come on. Wake him up a little behind. A little less in his face, a little bit more on his hind leg. Yeah, don't be in his face quite. Nope, that's okay. A little bit shoulder in, feeling good. Look up. Get him off your left leg there. Good. Keep your chin up. Good, and ask him to canter. Keep him collected in front. 
still kind of unexciting to me with the way the hind leg takes off into that transition. Give him a little kick here. Quicker behind. Yep, and walk again. Sit. Yep, but try to fix that with your leg. You're still too much in the inside rein all the time for fixing him pulling down. His pulling down has to do with his butt end dragging way out behind him. You gotta kick his butt under a little when you feel him pulling down. It's not doesn't have anything to do with his face. The face is just a symptom. Now he'll pick up that transition better if you stop letting him fall through that right side of his body. Do your transitions on a straightaway, not a circle. Back to the walk. If he pulls down, kick. Ah, give him a little, yeah, wake him up a little bit there. Good. And then canter on again. Keep a little right half halt when you canter on so he doesn't fall against that right shoulder quite so much. Yeah. Yep. And then sit and walk again and mean it. Leg. Leg. Little kick. Wake him up a little. Good. Keep your outside rein as you canter on. Yeah, so he stays round and through and doesn't get to pop up in his pole, but that you keep that outside shoulder more lined up. Try your again, your downward. Leg. Drive in with your butt. Yep. Yeah, a little better. Good. Half halt a little bit. Half halt a little. Half halt a little bit. Yeah, good. And then down the next long side, haunches in. Laura, if you want to switch arenas, let me know. I just... Okay, our timing keeps kind of getting off. Okay, yep. And then if he's leaning on you, you've got to half halt him a little with that outside rein, but then you've got to make his hind legs quicker every time. Yep, and haunches in again. And if he dives down at all, that's okay. Don't get mad about that. I love, I love a little bit of reaction there every once in a while. There, good. Get off of his mouth, good. Good, and then center line and half pass left and try not to be too much in his face. Get your bend, yeah, look at your letter. Uh, well, yeah, sort of, you know about where the middle is. <laughs> Leave me alone, Laura. I'm used to my dressage letters. Good, keep him up and do not let him change. Your right leg says I'm staying back and you're not changing without permission. Good, now on this long side, collect him twice as much. Make the canner a pirouette canner. Supple him right and make your pirouette canna. Whoops, walk. Not just, now that told me it was more hand than leg, which we have a tendency to kind of see with you. So counter canner again. Right into it. Where are you going? I want straighter lines. You cantered on to the left lead, falling right again. Now supple him right, but keep your right leg on a little and collect more. A lot of right leg and collect a lot more. Smaller. There, now tap him and ask for a change. Good. Walk, pet him. That was super. That was only with love. That was a tiny bit croup high, but it was 100% clean. Okay? That's his hard one. That's the hard one. Yes, ma'am. That side, I find if I can make the canner super small and tidy and organized. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get him loose and get him really quick in that really small canner. Tap just a little bit right before I ask. That seems to help that change come through. That seems to do the trick. Yes, especially because he gets really slow behind, you know, and especially that left lead canner that if there's, a, if there's one lead that wants to get more lateral and be a little slower, it's always that left lead. Yeah. So that's going to affect the change to the right lead. You know what I mean? Because the quality of the canner you have coming to the change is 90% of what's going to make a good change for you. You know what I mean? So if your quality of canner on that left lead is a little lateral and a little strung out and a little slow behind, you're never going to get a change from that lead to the other one. Whereas the right lead canner tends to be a little bit quicker and a little bit easier to collect. The change to the left is a little easier to get accomplished because the right lead is better to start with that you're approaching it from. Uh -huh. All right, gather him up again. And because he's a lazy fellow, doing that walk transition right after the change with a big reward, they get that. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. Um, the little pinto mare that I was riding yesterday, 
You saw I would school a change and then I would keep going? Yeah. It's because for her, stopping is inconvenient. Yeah. She likes to go. She likes to keep cantering and that makes her happy. So for her, letting her keep cantering afterwards is almost more of a reward than giving her a walk break. Yeah. You know, she kind of would like to be able to keep zooming around a little bit. All right, so a couple times at the walk, a little Trevere. Make sure that he's hot to your leg. Quicker to your leg, make him jumpy a little bit. Tap him once that he jigs a little bit. Make him jig a little. Tap him harder. Come on, make him excited. Come on, yeah, I want him a little mad at you. Good, and walk again. It takes a while. <laughs> he says, I am due for shoes, you know. Good. Good, and go ahead and canter when you're ready now. Yeah, good, keep it collected. Good. And we're gonna ride a few times a little bit Trevere. Working on, yeah, little half halts on the outside. Not overriding your inside rein. The more you wanna hang on that right rein to get the bend, the more your right leg's gonna kick him. Yep, and a little hunches in again. Half halts him back a little bit and give him a little bump with that outside leg and get him quick behind. Yeah, that's a girl, good. And then let get out of it, good. And then center line and half pass right to somewhere in the middle of the long wall. Laura, giving me a hard time. All right, circle back around. I want you to do your half pass right out of the turn. If you were in the dressage arena with the letters, you wouldn't have started half passing till L. Look now, look now and turn, keep turning, keep turning, keep going. Nope, circle back around. His shoulders have to basically not get glued to center line, okay? You need to make that turn and continually turn until you're onto a diagonal towards your letter. Turn, keep turning, turn, like you're gonna go on a diagonal to the right. Go to the right, there, take the shoulder more. Take the shoulder more. Yeah, take that shoulder over there from the reins, yeah, exactly. The reins are gonna move that shoulder over a little bit more. Now keep him collected, that left leg, don't let him get big in the canter, keep it small, collected. That left leg has to keep bugging him a little bit to say, hey, you're staying on this right lead canter, now flex him left. Collect more, collect more, collect more, he's getting too big, good, good, and then try your change from that. Nope, that was together behind, walk. Counter canter again, let's try it again. You're letting that canter get a little too big. Needs to be a little more collected. Walk and counter canter. Stay back, supple him left. Rock him back, a nope, your left leg's too far forward. It needs to stay back until it's time for a change. That's the canter, super. Walk and reward him, that one was good. If your left leg comes forward too soon, then you're missing half of your aid for the change, okay? Because yeah. both legs are gonna move from the old lead to the new lead at the same time, okay? So if you're on right lead canter, your right leg is at the girth, your left leg is back, it stays back there and says don't change until I tell you to. And then that leg, when that leg finally comes forward, that's when the horse knows that the change is allowed to happen. Your new outside leg is gonna come back also Depending on the horse, some like more outer leg pressure, some like more inner leg pressure, it just depends. Some of them like it kind of even. I find actually most of them prefer it to be a little bit even pressure. They just want the release of that change to the new lead. But if you're going along and your left leg is kind of a little spaghetti noodle that's just kind of like flopping around there and it slides forward whenever it kind of just stops thinking about it, then yeah. he's not gonna be as clear about when is that time that I'm supposed to do that change. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have any questions so far? Oh, uh, no. Mm, no. Like a kid. She's in heaven. She doesn't care. Yeah. Just keep talking. Yep, yeah, just keep riding. <laughs> I'm gonna totally fix this. That's the good, that's the good news. Look, all the... Over here, though. Cindy, what? Fine. I don't care. Okay. All right. I'm content. I'm content. Just hard to, hard to teach without all my letters.
Because it's just kind of hard for me to teach without my letters. Well, without my letters in the right places, because I have some of my letters. Yeah. They're just in weird positions. It's very simple for me. He doesn't, I mean, he's my four-year-old, so. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. No, we're good. Okay. Tia, I might need, she's next. I may need to move her in. Her geometry is bad enough on it, on her own. Yeah, that's the only horse, that mare, that I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to fix or not, that, that black and white mare on the changes. That's one of the first. so going. She's so out of here. Yeah. Yeah, she's so out of here with the changes and so tense. And I just, and she's 14. She wasn't started under saddle until she was eight or nine. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's a tricky, you know, Reuben had him when he was younger. This one had him when they were younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a little different when they've been, they were at least started right. And then they were screwed up somewhere along the way or got messed up along the way. But when, when they never even had, they've only been taught wrong. That's really hard. Well, and Reuben and that one's had consistent sort of massage training. So they're kind of, the way we train is that compared to with some other disciplines trained. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what Ringo was doing, what that mare was getting. All right, let's finish with a little trot work. Okay. I want to leave the chain. I know you'd love to ride 50 changes today, <laughs> but I don't think he's got 50 clean changes in him yeah. on a daily basis. I think he's got one or two clean ones in him right now. <laughs> Uh -huh. For another for another month or two, and then he'll be able to do them all the time. Yeah. But when they're at this stage where they're kind of green and learning kind of how to do them right again, when you get them, it makes sense to them if you do it again that you must not have liked the one you did before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, she's redoing it. Something must have been wrong with the other one. If we were happy with the changes, then we have to kind of say, okay, we're good. We'll just do something else now. All right, let's go trot when you're ready. Now we work on those little tiny abs of yours. <laughs> <laughs> that bouncy trot. <laughs> a little bit more tempo, which I find is a little hard for him with the lateral work as well, yeah. that he wants to get a little slow and sluggish in the, in the lateral work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he has to kind of... He has to retrain his muscles to work a little quicker in everything that we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And then down, down the long side, shoulder in. Don't make him deeper. Quit messing with his face. Leave his mouth alone. A little quicker there. It's like making us run our 10-minute mile at 9 minutes all mm -hmm. of a sudden. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> oh, this is way harder. I'm doing the same thing I I'm always feeling do. But like the pain, repetition yes. of the stride quickening is a little harder. Yeah. Good. Keep him up. Somebody's out of shape after not fighting him for a month. Sit as much as you can, Kay. Okay. You're like, God, dang it. <laughs> oh, no. Shoulder in again. Good. Keeping that tempo there. Yep. That angle's got to be steeper for the shoulder in. And don't fuss with his mouth. He doesn't need to be rounder. He's plenty round. He's a little behind the vertical, if anything. Good. Shoulder in. Yep. That's better. Keep that angle from the reins, moving the shoulders a little bit over, and that inside leg keeps that inside hind along the rail. Outside leg supports the outside hind leg a little bit, but your inside leg is going to dominate. Try to stop pulling backwards in your reins. If you want to fluff him up a little bit with your contact, that's fine, but every time you pull backwards, you're pulling him deeper. Yeah. And deeper is going to make him heavier and less balanced and slower behind, okay? Yeah. So you got to, and again, if he gets a little too low, the trick is going to be riding a little half halt and getting the hind legs quicker under you rather than just pulling him up. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Pulling him up, you're kind of dropping his back. Back to trot again. Taking too many walk breaks, girlfriend. He's like, he's like more canter. Back to trot, please. I like where his head is at, though. Good. Right there. Don't mess with his face. Just keep your hands forward. His pull is good there. Good. Good, and next long side haunches in. Yep, and soft in your hands. Good, stay, just stay so, totally soft. You don't need to bother him right now. He's actually pretty good right there. Haunches in. Yep, good, and straighten him. I'd rather have half of a long side of a quicker, no, haunches in again. And quick, quick, quick behind. Yep, 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 good. And one more time on the next long side, those 
two sets of Travers where you just started and he has to go super quick behind for us. Keep him up a little in front with your hands. Yep. Good. And then straighten him up. Super. And then again, haunches in and keep him quick behind. Good. I love it. I love it. And straighten him. Center line. Half pass left. That tempo in your half pass. A little bit upward with your hands to lift him a little bit, not backwards. You might have to fluff him up a little bit with your hands and then let go a little bit. Let go afterwards. Good, keep letting go of those reins a little afterwards. Take your hands forward to his mouth and give and stay giving for like five strides in a row. Yeah, good, quit fussing with him. Yeah, better, shoulder in, keep that tempo. Careful not to snatch at him on that right rein. He gets defensive sometimes. Yep, keep your angle a little steeper. Both hands to the right, don't pull backwards. A little bit of a lift, but not backwards with your hands, okay? Good, hands in front. Keep your hands forward. Your hands belong to his mouth, not his mouth belonging to your hands. Shoulder in again. Hands in front. You get him really mouthy when your hands are too rough. Let his mouth alone, because he's quiet. He's good in his mouth right here. You'll see on the video that his mouth is perfect right there. Don't start messing with him on the short wall. Just add a little bit of leg if he drops down too much. And haunches in on the next long side. Start it from your leg, not your inside rein. Don't grab that right rein. Don't grab at it. Get to the leg first, yep. And then again, right leg a little bit first. Push the shoulders left, and then the haunches coming a little bit to the right. Good, and letting go. And stay letting go through the turn to center line and half pass towards me. Yep, good. Keep those hands in front. You got it. Good. Don't pull too much on this right rein. Give a little kick from your right leg if you feel like you're starting to have to wrestle with him. Yeah, good. Give now. Give now. Give now. Give now. Give now. Stay giving. One diagonal medium. You can go rising if you need to. Keep him up with your snaffle rein a little shorter. Hands in front. Good. Hands in front, quiet hands. Good, hands in front. Keep your hands to his mouth more. Push your hands towards his mouth. There we go, one more time with your hands like that. Good, hands to the mouth. Good, keep your hands way out there. They belong to him. All you're responsible is if he wants to go too low, which he doesn't. Good. And bring him back. Good job, kiddo. And go ahead and let him walk. Regulating tempo, Reward him. activating the hind end and getting him more underneath himself a little bit, the lighter he's gonna get in the contact. He's not gonna get lighter. In, the reason he's heavy in the contact isn't because he's running through you. Yeah. He's, he is in a sense, but only because he's running through you onto his face on the forehand because his hind legs are way out behind. So the more we can get that hind end under, the more he can come up in front, the lighter he's actually gonna get in the contact. Yeah. So, but, but having the ability to quicken the hind leg is really the key. And you and I talked about that before I even sat on him that first day, that when, when we were talking at the mounting block at the horse show, and I said, my suspicion based on what I've seen and whatever is that he's not quick enough behind. And that if we can get him quicker behind, we can solve all these problems. And that has really been the case, I think, for him. Yeah. So, but you can fix all that. But again, it's gonna be a, a blanket issue that we got to deal with with everything that he does for it to really work completely if you let him still be kind of slow behind in the trot work then it's gonna it's gonna work against you in the can of work too you know yeah. so good job kid very good